Hey guys, it's the second rest day here in Laikanze, and that means it's time for a second recap of my tournament here at the Tata Steel Challengers. Um, first rest day we did some basketball, was good fun, and this rest day I just didn't do that much to be honest. I just went to the beach, a uh, nice little walk, great weather, um, watching the amateur tournaments a bit, uh, chatting up with some guys, and you know, just a relaxing day. And um, but also time for my um, my recap from round um, six uh, till round eight. And we have good news and we have bad news. The good news is I doubled my tournament score in these three rounds. The bad news is it's still only one point out of eight games, um, which is it's it's starting to look a bit painful. Um, and yeah, sure, I wish I would have won a game by now. And it's it's becoming, the term is becoming psychologically quite um, challenging because uh, if you play an open tournament and it's not going so well, you get paired against lower rated opponents at some point. And, you know, you can just relax your preparation a bit and you can freestyle a bit and try to get your, you know, your your mojo back again. Uh, and but in this tournament, it's it's just not possible. You just keep getting strong opponents round after round, and especially when you like have like one out of eight, you got this nice big target on your back that says, "Well, defeat me, basically." Um, so they all want to beat me, and that makes perfect sense, of course. Um, but that means it's not getting it's not getting easier, I think. Um, but I am quite happy with the the progress in my tournament. Um, the games were pretty interesting, and um, yeah, sure, I'm still waiting for my win, and I have some. I, I had a very good opportunity, but I'll I'll show you in the games. Um, so I'm I'm still hunting for my for my first victory, and I'm still confident it it will get there. Um, but for now, let's let's just have a look at the, the games we played round six, seven, and eight. <coughs> so round six, I played against the young Russian guy uh, Andrei Acipenko, and um, I was playing with White, and we got into this Italian. And I've been playing this Italian with uh, Bishop G5 a lot lately. It's not the most well-known line, um, but it is quite interesting, I think, because you basically always force Black to go H6 and G5. And that is not necessarily a bad thing for Black, but it is it is quite um, committing. There's there's no turning back from this point on. This this king side always be um, weakened in a way, and Yes, I mean, queen side is not always that evident because um, I can always go b4, a4 and get some quick attack going. So black will always have, well, hopefully always have a problem with his king. And he also castled straight away. And that is, I think, a bit too early. So during the game, I decided not to go with my um, preparation. But um, because there's like so many different move orders, you can like play h6 and g5, whatever you want. You can cast whatever he wants. And that's confusing, but here I decided to just um, deviate from my preparation. And I decided I don't want to castle kingside because I want to punish his optimistic play there. So I went bishop b3, a bit of a prophylactic move. I went knight e2, and I went queen e2. And I'm basically saying I'm very likely castling queenside here and then launching this attack uh, with, with h4, trying to um, weaken this guy in g5. And, and hopefully get something going against his king. And I think it was practically a pretty clever choice and because these guys are well prepared. And um, here he got on some unfamiliar territory. So he went on h5, I went h3, which is a very cool move. Um, the thing is that if he takes on g3, I can take back the pawn. And this looks terrible. I mean, normally you want to capture towards the center um, like this. Um, but this is actually not that bad because now I can try to control the f5 square, which is a very important square. Uh, I can like bring my knight to e3, I can maybe play g4, put my rook in f1. And once I get this square under control, um, I can put a lot of pressure on the f file. And I can always try to break open the position with h4 even at some point. So it, I think this is a pretty interesting idea. Uh, also, he, he, that's why he probably didn't uh, take on g3, he went knight e7. And here I played on h2 because I wanted to, to force matters here. I don't want him to... If I give him one more move, let's say I play some random move like a4, he goes knight g6. And now whatever I do, like knight h2, he always goes knight f4. And, and, and he will get a second knight on f4. And that's very annoying. 
So I, I didn't want this uh, to happen. So okay, I played knight h2. Um, he played knight f4, which makes sense. Bishop takes, pawn takes, but now because I haven't castled, I can just open up the king's knight. G3 is a strong move, I think. Knight g6. And h4 is also strong, aiming to kick away the knight so that we can take the f4 pawn afterwards. And that will weaken his pawn structure quite a bit. He played queen f6, and now queen f3, and, and I think this is also quite a good move. And, and he's he's pretty stuck here. Um, the pawn is pinned, and it's, there's no easy way for him to unpin. So it's it's quite difficult for him already here, I think. Um, another interesting line which I was contemplating during the game is to castle queen side, uh, which looks very natural. I just castle and bring my rooks to the king side, but he could take take and go queen f2, and uh, exchanging queens isn't really good for me, I think. Um, and I was looking at queen h5, but this is getting complicated. He can take on g3 probably. He needs to protect his knight on g6 because there's his. So I was threatening to take the knight here, but now it's protected. I wanted to go d4. And and then after like... You can probably go... It's getting weird now because I, I want to of course go rook g1. That's why I'm blocking this, this strong diagonal. This diagonal of course. Um, but he can go... We were looking at it. He can go like knight f4, take the pawn. He can take on d4. And this is very complicated. And when I go rook g1, he always has knight e2 check. That is not going to work. And uh, this was a bit too complex, and I I didn't get the good feeling with this line. Because, once again, when he gets to exchange the queens, then my position is probably just worse. So, interesting stuff, but nothing that I liked. So, I went for this queen f3 move. And, um, well, this actually is quite decent, because now I, I won a pawn by force, because we took an f4 everything, and I was f4 pawn. It's just a weak pawn, and I can easily pick this guy up. Knight f3, rook h4. Rook f4. I'm just up a pawn, a very healthy pawn even. Bishop pair goes off the board, I get some pressure on the a-file. And now he played a 5 and... I'm not sure what happened here. Um, because I had planned to play e5. Always, after he plays f5. But for some reason, I talked myself out of it. And I decided not to go with e5. But it makes perfect sense, like I can go e5 and I was concerned. Um, he would go knight d5, I move my rook, and now my rook is a bit silly, and I didn't like it. But the thing is, I'm just going to go d4, and this pawn chain is so strong, and it makes his bishop look terrible. And sure, my pieces are quite passive, I didn't really see how I could activate my pieces here quick enough. But the point is, his position is even worse, so I have plenty of time to just take my time to slowly get my pieces to the right places. And that's what I just misevaluated. So what I did is, after f5, I decided... Um, sorry, I decided uh, to go king f1, thinking that if I get my rook to e1, I get all my pieces active. He takes an e4, and I was planning to go knight e4. Oh, sorry, rook takes e4. And I thought, well, there's no pressure on this f file with my rooks like this, because he's still targeting this pawn a bit. But I thought, well, there's nothing here. But then I saw he has knight e5, and, and this really bothered me, because if I take an f8, rook takes. Now the knight's going to f4, and that's just a beautiful square for the knight. Because the whole thing is, um, these knights are are connected, I mean, protecting each other. And if I want to move one of my knights, um, well, this one is pinned, and the f2 pawn, and this one needs to protect the knight in f3, so they're both stuck. So I thought, well, if I want to make any move, I should put my king here or here, and then remove my knight, and then develop my pieces. But the knight in f4 is blocking both squares. It also attacks this pawn, it attacks this pawn. And um, even after going here, it has a double attack on these two guys. So the knight in f4 was so extremely strong, and I, I totally missed that idea. I missed the strength of this move. <coughs> and that means I was I was stuck here. So I, I didn't know what to do, and I decided to take on f8 first and take back with my pawn to make sure that he cannot jump to f4 with his knight. Because he can't go here because the pawn, he can't go here because of this pawn. So I'm, I thought I was safe, but the thing is, uh, his bishop is so strong now. He has this guy here, and the rook here, and these are too strong, and I couldn't find a way to um, get away from the pressure of these two pieces. I went king g2, but he just gets check and goes back, and I decided to go for c4, still trying to keep control over d5, but he played knight g8. 
And here I took on b5, I played this move with knight of 6. <coughs> I played rook b5 and I off the draw, which is not my bravest action of this tournament. And But I was I was just stuck, I, it took me so much time and I even saw end games where I was like worse. Because he will just go knight g4, he will pick up this pawn and I will just be up one pawn, which is one of these two guys, which is not impressive. And I thought, well, h5 is weak, he has a bishop against my knights, still my knights are not able to move. I decided to call it a day, offer the draw, and um, yeah, there was there was a, a missed opportunity. I should have gone e5 when he played f5, this position was crucial. If I go e5, my position is, is extremely good, and I, I should be able to convert this into a full point. Didn't do it, so um, just a draw, but okay, I doubled my score with this game. Which still isn't that bad, but I was really hoping for more here. <coughs> Alright, have the next So the next game I was playing with Black against our young Indian friend Ragnar Nanda. And um, I played him a few months ago in Apeldoorn and I got crushed with Black in like 25 moves or something. And I decided that's not gonna happen again. Um sadly for me he didn't agree with that decision and he crushed me in 23 moves. Um so I was playing black and we got this French Steinich on the board. And um, this is just my um, my repertoire and I just play what I usually play. And he never played this line, so I was a bit surprised, but I was confident because I, I lost one or two games pretty badly in this line, but I checked it, so I was confident, you know. Um, but I just lost track pretty easily. And H3 is a clever waiting move. and. I played f6 here, which is just um, not the right plan in, in this position. I thought I'd just open up. I'm just going to swing my rook over here, or maybe just e7. And um, yeah, I'll be fine. Wasn't the case. He took an f6. He played rook a1. And here I played knight h5. And because I thought I had all the tactics working in my favor, I played knight e2. And I was just considering moves like e5, g5 even. Opening up, bringing my rook somewhere, and you know, just have this very nice attack and make use of this well, somewhat annoying pin on this bishop and some pressure. Uh, but nothing works. It's just um, it's just bad. So I played at h5 confidently that something would work, but nothing worked. And well, then at h5 is just a terrible move to be honest. So um, yeah, I can show some lines with e5, but. So this was the point e5. Like if he if he takes, I can I can play like knight takes e5 and knight's pinned and this is just very good for me. Um, but he can go bishop g6 and then I try to make something work like knight f6 and pawn takes and knight takes knight takes and like knight e4 maybe just take once on f2. I'm not even sure. Knight e4 queen takes. Get my king here. <laughs> and then I'm hoping to, to regain some material on f2, but nothing works. Um, he has many options. Um, you can go like just queen d4, for example, and it's it's just nothing. It, it just doesn't work, and uh, that's a big problem. And also g5 is interesting, like g5, fg, rook g7, gh. You can take an f3, and things are getting very complicated. Um, but he can just kill all my action by playing g6, and I have nothing here. I was hoping for e5. Um, but you can just take on h6, and I can try to win some material, but it's just not enough. It's never enough in any line, and that was really disappointing. So after knight e2, I, I actually had to move my knight back, which is psychologically like impossible to play. So I decided I just leave the knight there for now, and I just play b4. And the thing was, I wanted to get rid of this bishop on d3. So the plan was, and this is very silly, the plan was to take on f2, take with the knight on b4. And I thought, well, I'm going to grab this bishop on the next move. And when the bishop is gone, I can bring my rook here. So there's no more bishop g6, because that was my biggest concern. And with my rook on f7 and knight on h5, I'm pressuring this f4 pawn quite a bit. Uh, but then I looked at the position, and he went bishop g6, and I was like, right, yeah, so the bishop does have a square, obviously, because this was the move I was concerned about the entire time. So he played bishop g6, I was like, oh crap, okay. This game is pretty much over. And um, yeah, he got everything. He got the knights on d4 and d5, which is the perfect place for these knights. Got a terrible bishop. 
it's kind of strong and yeah i get not maybe an a5 was still a move but it's just it's just a dead loss position i played knight d7 and c3 and i could resign which seems premature but once i show you the line here it's it's about exactly the right time to resign here knight is no squares well that's a2 is a square but let's not go there because it's just that um, so I, I need to take an e5, but pawn takes. Take an f2, rook takes. I got a square for my knight, but simply rook f1, and there's no way for me to um, stop queen f8 without losing any material. <coughs> so this is a pretty um, pathetic position for black. And um, yeah, that's why I resigned after c3 here. Um, devastating loss, but he just outplayed me, like opening wise, position wise, just anything. and. Um, Slightly worrying because it's the first time you play this line, and I've played this line for a few more games now. But this was a painful loss, so let's just quickly forget about this one. Um, next game, uh, so the last game was with White against Maxim Chigayev, another Russian player, and we went into this Italian once again. Uh, but he was a bit better prepared, so once again, his h6 move. As you can see now, the move order changes a bit sometimes because queen e7, b4, but still has to go to g5. Like the only way to get out of this pin, bishop g3, not h7, which is a novelty here um, at this position, but the plan is not new. <coughs> I think he wants to do something like knight f8 and g6 and then push this pawn here. Um, so I decided once again not to go into his preparation and I. Um, Remember the, a line or an idea that sometimes is possible and playable. So I went for d4, which is highly questionable and, and probably just bad. Um, but I knew it had some interesting ideas. It kind of makes sense. You want to open up the position while this king is still in the center. So it's not totally crazy. Um, the plan is like if he takes to just take with the knight. And, um, just sacrifice, sacrifice his pawn and this guy looks c1. <coughs> and the point is. His king is not really going anywhere. Like castling kingside is always risky, and castling queenside is also risky. So I, I do have compensation for the pawn, which the engine probably thinks is not enough. But then again, I'm not playing an engine; I'm just playing a human being. So, but he didn't take. He played h5, which is clever, um, threatening to win a piece. I should go h4 now to stop it, and then g4 kicking away the knight. And now he can easily take on d4, which was still somewhat planned. Um, bishop takes. And here I played knight d3, sorry, which is, um, <coughs> which is, I think, very interesting. Excuse me. Which is quite interesting. Um, because I don't want to waste too much time here. The thing is, if I move my rook, which is possible, you can just go like bishop f6, maybe just grab this pawn. And this position looks quite okay. It's quite decent. My knight is a bit weird on e1, and I'm very slow with my attack here. I went knight d3 and he thought for almost like half an hour here uh, deciding on what to do and, and he decided to take the rook on a1 but judging by the time he spent here it's, it's not an easy choice. Um, I'm down a pawn in the exchange but once again his king side is, is damaged and also costing queen side is not that obvious because I have very easy ways to break through with like b5 for example. Staying in the center is also dangerous because I can always um, I can always push e5. So he just had to castle, and um, I tried to play as active as possible. Here I played knight f4. The position is very complex. The engine says it's 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 much better for black, but I think during the game it's not very easy to play. And and white has some interesting ideas and always has some sort of pressure somewhere against the black king. It always makes black feel uncomfortable. A queen f6. I don't want to exchange queens, of course. Bishop e6 and bishop d5, but he played well. He just played well. Um, I took with a knight. The plan is to get my knight to f5. That's the perfect square for my knight. A queen g7, knight e3 is just going to jump here. And hopefully I, I get some pressure against his king. Um, he played knight d4, and here I was, I was hoping to go for queen c7, which is an interesting line, but I couldn't get it to work. He has knight e2 check, king h2. He can take on g3, pawn takes. Now this is a very nasty double attack on the knights. 
<laughs> and if I go knight c4, you can go rook c8. And um, he takes take on c4, and he he just up, is up a piece in the end of the line. But however, after queen d4, I was looking at knight f5. Queen takes d2, and now I want to go knight h6, which is protected by the queen. So rook f4 was my idea. And I, I, I couldn't really see what he's going to do about knight h6 check and, and take on f7. And I felt, well, he will still be up like a piece of the exchange. But it's not, um, it's once again not super easy with his vulnerable king. But then I saw he has a very easy way to cover it. He can queen takes a2. Protecting f7, and being down a rook, I got no compensation here. Um, like if I take on d6, trying to go here, you can just play uh, queen e6, or you can even play f6, and um, protect against all the possible mate threats over there. But there was no option, so I had to go queen c4, queen b5, queen d3, rook a d8, which is a decent move, I think, knight b3, c5. This was already forcing. I took on d4. I did exchange queens because I didn't really have any other choice here. <coughs> I went knight f5. And here I thought I had some control over the position. I can probably win this guy and this guy. It's what I hoped. And my knight is beautiful. My bishop is not too bad. And I can activate my rooks. I was, I was still confident here. But it wasn't justified. So, bed rook e8. He just plays d5 and he just cracks open my pawn center and once I lose my pawn structure a bit then also my pieces are just out in the open a bit loose not protected by any pawns so um play knight of eight and once this knight gets to e6 he gives him full control of the position and he can just easily win and it's already easily winning but in time trouble I decide to give a few checks maybe confuse him a little bit here but um Obviously, he didn't uh, allow me to trick him in any way, so he exchanged the knights, and rooks became active, and um, made a few more moves, but um, it's just came over, recapture, he got d2, queen, but he queens with um, checkmate on the next move. So yeah, the, the end game was totally losing after all, uh, but still I was quite happy with the game, <coughs> because at least I... I sacrificed the exchange in the pawn, and I think it was quite interesting. Many things to think about, many options, and I, I still need to analyze the game any better. I didn't really have time, or didn't want to take time for that during the tournament. But I think it was very interesting. And, and these are the games I, I do like to play. Um, sadly, no points for me um, from these games. But um, yeah, it, as I mentioned in the previous video, for me it's about fighting spirit. and. And enjoying my games and learning as much as possible and also getting positioned to where you can learn and have interesting um, ideas and um, but that always doesn't always give me any points so that's too bad but um okay so one out of eight it's uh, not brilliant it's actually quite bad but after this rest day we have two rounds and then another rest day and then three more rounds so five to go and I still think I get plenty of opportunity to win a game. And um, yeah, I just need to um, make sure I'm um, psychologically fit and uh, prepared to, to keep fighting against these guys. And I do realize there's no easy games and there will always be difficult preparation. Um, but we'll just go for it and um, let's see how that goes. So tomorrow I think it's against Lucas van Verest. So that's an opportunity. He's playing fine, but it feels like another opportunity to uh, to score a point, and we'll try our best to, to do so. Um, so that's it for this one. Um, next recap will be on the next rest day, which is after two rounds. So if you have any questions, comments, or anything else, just feel free to let me know in the comments. And um, I will thank you for watching, and hope you enjoyed it.